See the all-new Ford Focus, winner of the Irish Small Compact Car of the Year 2019 at the Ford Innovate 191 sales event. The Focus ST line features Ford Sync with touchscreen, smartphone mirroring, ST line design kit and cruise control. And right now you can order a 191 Ford Focus with an amazing 7-year warranty, 7-year roadside assistance and 2 years free servicing. All from just €23,525. See the all-new Ford Focus at your local participating Ford dealer. Offer ends December 10th. Ford Innovate. Driving better value for you. Ford. Go further. Price excludes delivery and related charges. Terms and conditions apply. See Ford.ie for details. Welcome into the Sports Memo College Football Every Game on the Board podcast where we got our closer in, Robbie Vino, to finish it off here. He's uh, 5% blue chip totals, 8-3 and three on the year. Also college football, 4-5% and five percent plays, 37-24, and 24, 61% year to date great choice here for college football and guys we got uh the bowl package which we're also including college championship weekend in that discounted to just 99 dollars on the website this weekend make sure to check that out at sportsmemo.com you can get every play from robbie vino or any handicapper on the site for just 99 bucks for the rest of the college football season starting this weekend Robbie, welcome to the podcast. How you feeling? I am feeling all right, buddy. As you know, battling a little bit of a cold here, but we will get through this. Um, <clears throat> no problem. Good time of year. Like I said before, uh, these college football championship games, it's a nice weekend. Glad to see more conferences are going to it. Um, but real quick, while you were go ahead and spouting my numbers, I feel like I should get online and go ahead and purchase a Drew Martin. Uh, package here you're going pretty good yourself i see seven and three over the last 10 in college football so congratulations to you on the hot streak and for listeners out there don't forget about drew when you're looking to purchase (laughs) yeah i appreciate that ravi and it's championship weekend it's a fun weekend to be watching college football fun weekend to be betting it for sure we'll um finish off the card here teddy went up to uh the sec championship game which you can see on uh sportsmemo.com listen to that pod as well and we'll pick it up here with 317-318 Fresno State, Boise State in the Mountain West Championship game. This is a rematch. We got six rematches this weekend, Robbie. So uh, keep that in mind when you're handicapping these games. we seeing a 52 and a half being the total. And this one's flopping all around. What, it was Boise 3. Now we're seeing Pickham minus one at some shops, Robbie. What's going on here, Fresno State, Boise State? Yeah, there's been a little bit of a tug of war <clears throat> amongst the money here, Drew. It did um, the line did immediately go down. Uh, Boise State three down to I think I saw you know a lot of ones yesterday, and then quickly or not quickly, but during the afternoon yesterday, back up to two two and a half, and then today, as of about I don't know ninety minutes ago, we saw a big rush on Fresno to where Chris has actually made Fresno the favorite in that one point. A lot of pickums out there, plus one, whichever side you like, there's a variety out there, so you can get the best of the number uh, no matter where you shop. Like you say, Drew, rematches galore in these conference championship games, and this one in particular, one that I watched uh, through its entirety the night that they played, and it's a game where Fresno State seemingly uh, had everything going their way mid-third quarter. I think it's 17-3 mid-third. Boise couldn't do anything offensively. All of a sudden, they struck with a a long downfield vertical pass and a couple of other big plays. And next thing you knew, they're winning that game 24-17 and end up victorious by that same score. So I think for Fresno State, and I know for every other team, that's in a revenge situation uh this weekend in a championship game you know it sticks in the front of your mind that we got beat by this team but in this particular case i think it hurt fresno state that loss they were on such a roll at that point in time i can remember their power rating just increasing 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 and to look so good for two and a half quarters and then go home empty-handed mentally if there is a, uh, a psychological, motivational game this week where you would incorporate it into the handicap more than others, I think it would be this one. Fresno State, to me, chip on the shoulder, the whole nine yards. Now, for Boise State, you know, the last month of the season, Drew, they've gotten away with an awful lot of personnel changes and youth 
on especially the defensive side of the football. I know I've played against it uh, at least once, and the defense has risen to the occasion more than once. I, I thought that that secondary might get lit up, um, but it hasn't. You know, the freshmen have, have proven to be pretty good. This is a different situation. Lucky for Boise, in my estimation, that they're home in this game because if you took all this youth on the road, I don't know that they would perform as well. Uh, towards the end of the season here, the majority of Boise's football games were played at home on the blue turf. I think they were home for three of the last four, which which helped. Uh, but here I think Fresno just – you know, on both sides of the football, they either match up evenly or are better. I think fundamentally the edge goes to the Fresno State team. Like I said earlier, I think motivationally – they have a little bit of an added charge in them. Uh, they came up short last season. So I've kind of looked their way here, Drew. You would prefer to have the opening number if you're betting now, of course. Um, you lost what could have been a little bit of value. But I don't know that it makes that much of a difference. I think you could have played Fresno money line, you know, when the game opened or even now. And still been in pretty good shape. So at Pickham or plus one, whatever you can get, I would look towards the Fresno State side here. I think that defense will end up being the difference. I think, you know, McMarion has been a very underrated quarterback this season. I know we hear a lot about Brett Rippon, rightfully so. Uh, and he's done a lot with a couple of his top-notch wide receivers on this shelf for a long time. Uh, but McMarion, with his legs, with his accuracy – has been a real good threat for Fresno State, and I think they'll probably come through and make one extra play here to win this game. So I would look towards Fresno. Yeah, this is one of the rematches, Robbie. Um, this is the fourth time these two teams have played in the last calendar year as well. Last year they kind of had the same setup playing the last week of the season, then again in the championship game. Um, a, a couple things down the stretch that scare me about the Fresno State side is they lost three straight against the number down the season where Boise won three straight ATS um, to, to end the season. Strength of the schedule also favors Boise as well, but nonetheless, it's going to be a fun one Saturday night out west. Uh, one game I will definitely be tuning into. We got the ACC championship game, Robbie, about the same time. 319-320 on the Sports Memo odd screen, seeing uh, what, 50, 53 now? 52 and a half the total? Opened at 57 and a half, so some, some big under money here, Robbie. Also a huge number. Clemson laying <laughs> almost four touchdowns seeing uh let's see consensus about 27 and a half clemson tigers are, are laying i believe this one's in charlotte robbie how would you look to bet this one you know talk about hot down the stretch drew pittsburgh was six and one against the number uh second half of the year or even a little more than the second half of the year so certainly they've been a ticket cashing machine but you know the reason for the drop in total the reason for the increase in point spread is really fundamentally based i mean you listen to uh or read analysis of this particular game and then you do your own and you come back to the same exact uh spot which is if pick can't run the ball pick can't win and i've said that about maryland this year <clears throat> i think it's come true in almost all instances and for Pittsburgh, we talked a little bit earlier this season. We had them on the card, and at that point in time, I think I had pointed out uh, a statistic where they hadn't thrown for over 175 yards in any contest. Kenny Pickett wound up throwing for 316 in their second-to-last game of the season against Wake Forest. But other than that, Pittsburgh, as far as uh, passing the football, has been absolutely stagnant. And you're just not going to run through Clemson. Uh, it's not going to happen with that defensive front and the fact that they're going to stack the box and tell Kenny Pickett, you go ahead and beat us if you can. And it's doubtful that he can. All that being said, with all the fundamental advantages that Clemson has, their defense over the Pittsburgh offense, 27 and a half becomes a real large number. Um, you know, and I get the fact that if Pittsburgh gets behind 14-0, how in the world do they catch up? Pittsburgh's going to have to make a play somewhere, whether it be special teams, whether it be uh, on the defense. Maybe they pick Trevor Lawrence off something in order to cover this point spread. 
but I don't um, – I'm just not interested in laying 27 and a half points with Clemson even though you would find it real hard to make a good argument of how Pitt could stay in this game. They would have to you know, go with the old proverbial grind out the clock, run the football. Pat Narduzzi is a – you know, kind of an old school coach defense and running game. But I'm sure that offensively, they're going to have some type of game plan that they feel will help them move the ball against Clemson. I'm just not so sure any of it would work. Uh, On the Clemson side, Travis Etienne has really gotten going running the football. The passing game uh, with T. Higgins and that receiving core is electric as well. So Clemson can put up their points. I have a real tough time with a side in this game. I probably won't play. And not interested in laying 27 and a half, but fearful of maybe the 38 to 10 final that could be coming here. Maybe you would get to the under in this contest. Uh, I think that it's been chipped away to the point where I don't see an awful lot of value in it. I mean, at 57 and a half, there was certainly more value with the opener than there is at 52 and a half or 53, which is what we're looking at right now. So it becomes, you know, it just becomes a real difficult game to play. I don't, one thing I will say, Drew is I don't agree with the sentiment that's out there in certain spots that says all Clemson has to do is win this game and secure their Final Four uh, spot in the college football playoff. Therefore, maybe they would be a little disinterested in playing four quarters if they're... It's just not in Dabo Swinney's nature to let off the gas pedal in any contest so I don't know if that comes into play whatsoever. Clemson, if they can win by 45, they'll win by 45. They're not going to be up by, you know, 28 and say, let's stop now and, you know, save it for the playoff. Um, so I don't agree with that aspect of it, which some people playing the dog will le- are leaning on. Uh, it's a tough game. It's really a tough, tough game to handicap. If you truly like a side, go ahead and play it. I just don't know that I can find a definitive argument to play side or total. Robbie, we've got three two one three two two. The Big Ten championship game in Indianapolis, Northwestern Ohio State, sixty one. The total looks like uh, the Buckeyes laying fourteen or fourteen and a half. Some shops showing that extra hook on the two touchdowns. I'll tell you, Robbie, this is a uh, man. If you like stats, it's all pointing towards Ohio State as far as offensive stats. Haskins over four thousand yards passing, forty touchdowns, only seven picks. Compare him to Northwestern's quarterback Clayton Thorson. 2,600 yards passing, 14 TDs, 12 interceptions. Um, Also add in the fact Ohio State has won 30 of the last 31 versus Northwestern. Um, You know, uh, Northwestern's, what, a sub-100 team, Robbie, in terms of scoring offense. Ohio State's the number two scoring offense in the nation. You think 14 points is enough here? Well, and if you just took a general point spread number, Drew, you would say yes because underdogs in Northwestern's 12 football games this year are 11 and 0 with a push. Doesn't matter if Northwestern's the underdog or if their opponent's the underdog, which immediately tells you that they play to the level of competition. Uh, when they're favored, they're not as I don't know if they, I can't even say they're not as motivated because Pat Fitzgerald is an excellent motivational coach, but they just seem to play to the talent level. Uh, whether or not they can play to this talent level against Ohio State is another story, and I think that's why we see the bump from 12 and a half to 14 and a half. Some of that is reaction to what happened last Saturday in that Michigan game where Ohio State just went crazy and scored 63 points against the best defense, statistically um, pass defense in the land. Uh, you know, unlike what I just said about Pittsburgh, right? When we talked about Pittsburgh and said that if Pittsburgh can't run the football, they can't move the football. Northwestern's not that team. Northwestern can find ways other than running the football to go ahead and move the football. Clayton Thorson, in fact, you know, in a precautionary measure last week against Illinois in what was a very unimpressive 24 to 16 win by Northwestern, they held their top wide receiver Flynn Nagel out of that game. Slight injury didn't play and wanted him to be ready for this game. Northwestern already had the look ahead uh, to the championship game in their sights and probably have been game planning for two weeks on how do we score points to keep up with Ohio State in this game. It's not a case against Ohio State. And and listen, we've said this before, too. You can't 
in modern day college football go under the assumption that well we're going to grind it out we're going to move the chains we're going to eat the clock we're going to win time of possession and as an underdog it gives me such an advantage and I'm going to win because these teams like Ohio State will give you a seven minute drive and field goal or touchdown doesn't matter uh, but they'll come back in 90 seconds and score a touchdown so they can get beat by 20 minutes on the time of possession clock and still cover a game and still cover their and still score their 40 plus points hey, Pat Fitzgerald's smart enough to know he can't play that game he's not going to win this game 21 to 20 at least the way I see it he's going to have to score some points here and Thorson like I say with Nagel and his receivers they have much more of a balanced offense than does Pittsburgh. Um, Northwestern even mixes in some up-tempo. We've seen them in past years play a lot of up-tempo, which tells you that it's in Fitzgerald's playbook to go ahead and play quick. And, you know, when it, I think if the, um, if the situation lends itself to playing quick, I think they will. But they can run it. It's amazing that they're able to run it because of all the injuries that they've suffered at the running back position. Uh, but Isaiah Bowser has really come on and been tremendous for them. So I, I think that unlike Pitt, they're a little bit better equipped to try and, to try and stay in the game point-wise. But I, can you really match up with Ohio State? We've seen Ohio State do this number before where they come on late at the end of the season, final two games, three games, and find their way into the college football playoff. Remember a couple of years ago they beat Wisconsin like 59 to nothing in the championship game, a year where they really weren't going to get into the playoff, but that 59 to nothing victory got them there. Between Ohio State and Oklahoma, <coughs> those two teams especially, that could be battling for that four spot if it's vacated by a Georgia loss to Alabama. Uh, those are the two teams that really – have to look to keep their foot on the pedal and be ultra impressive score wise for the playoff committee for that reason you know i think urban meyer's team obviously has gone from 12 and a half to 14 and a half and it probably still the right side of that game northwestern talent wise uh on just yeah on guts and on um you know trying hard and on game planning. I think they can stay in it a little bit, but at some point in time, Ohio State's going to separate. Remember, Northwestern went through the last four games of the year, Drew, or three games of the year, with a secondary that was missing three starting corners. Somehow they got through Minnesota, and they got through the Minnesota game with that win, despite the fact that P.J. Fleck um, really lit a fuse under that offense the last half of the season, and he's got all those solid wide receivers, a couple of freshmen, and the passing game was going real good behind Tanner Morgan. They become favored against Northwestern, and Northwestern shuts them down. But I think they got through that game because if you watch Pat Fitzgerald talk, he tells you that he was, in his words, so angry and so pissed off when one of his assistants came to him middle of the practice week and said, hey, coach, we're underdogs to Minnesota. And he used that as motivation, and the team came through. All three of those defensive backs that were hurt the last three weeks are listed as probable for this game. Obviously, it's all hands on deck in a game like this. But they're, those three guys are not 100%. When you're running around against Paris Campbell and the speed of this Ohio statewide receiving core, they're going to make plays. Uh, I just think that they're too good for Northwestern over a 60-minute contest. So I agree with the line move here. 14, 14 and a half to me seems to be something where you could still find some value. I think if... Um, Probably anything up to the 16 and a half mark is still territory to play Ohio State. I think they can win it by 17 plus. Unless Urban Meyer's team falters tremendously on offense, I think they're going to win it by that margin. All right, a couple lesser games to finish it out real quick. We got 327, 328, East Carolina, NC State, 60 and a half the total, NC State, 23 and a half at home. It, two of the worst pass defenses in the land. Uh, a couple of teams that are very good at throwing the football, so you would expect the ball to be in the air here. Unlike a another game in the Carolina region, there's no weather to affect this one. Uh, South Carolina is going to be under rain and a lot of rain throughout the four hours of their contest. This contest won't be throughout rain. Uh, no rain in the forecast whatsoever. So hey, you could see, you know, these games, Drew, they were scheduled because – 
teams didn't have their 12th game. They had their uh, one of their games postponed by the hurricane earlier this season. And, they, you know, just to be safe and be able to qualify for a bowl game, you schedule that 12th game. East Carolina, whenever they get a shot at a team inside North Carolina, North Carolina, North Carolina State, Duke, they come to play. Uh, so I don't think this is a throwaway game for them. And no matter who plays quarterback here, they do have enough weaponry I think to uh, you know take advantage of what's a very weak North Carolina State secondary. You just have to protect the quarterback here. But for NC State, Ryan Finley and company, they should move the ball at will uh, up and down the field. Twenty-three, you know, the numbers come down a little bit, and I think that it's, it opened at twenty-five. And again, I think that's because you're going to get a full sixty-minute effort out of East Carolina. And let's not forget, Scotty Montgomery got fired yesterday. Uh, with that, I think the players probably put forth a big effort. I- I'm pretty sure he's not coaching this game. I think uh, his firing was effective immediately, <clears throat> which means you get an assistant in there to take the place of the head coach. But I think the players will be inspired here. They're obviously inspired anytime they play an in-state bigger dog than them. They want to make a name for themselves. So I-, I think that's the reason for the line move here. Don't know that I disagree. I just think both passing offenses have real advantages in this game. And with good weather, I think you could see the ball go up and down Carter Finley Stadium all day long. We also got Marshall, Virginia Tech near there as well. 50 and a half the total. Looks like Va Tech laying three and a half at home. You know, and for them, bowl eligibility is at stake here, Drew. Five wins because they come up with the win over Virginia last week. And now it becomes an extremely important game for Justin Fuente and Virginia Tech. They haven't been good all season, but they can salvage something with a win here. We see the number open four and a half, cross through the four and down to three and a half now. So there's Marshall money out there. Uh, Marshall's played very well down the stretch of the season. But they still lack offensively. They're a team predicated on defense. Their offense is very pedestrian. And if Virginia Tech can find some way to hit a couple of big plays in their passing game, and they ran the ball real well last week, which I think is a key too. Whether or not they run the ball as well against Marshall, yet to be seen. But, you know, if you're going to give me um, the choice Rob, I'll give you Virginia's defense or Rob, I'll give you Marshall's defense. I'm pretty sure I'm going to take Virginia's defense. So a question becomes, was that game last week that Virginia Tech played simply played on uh, above 100 percent focus because it was Virginia, because that game is a rivalry? Or can Virginia Tech duplicate that with bowl eligibility on the line? I happen to think that they probably can come close. I would have liked Marshall in this game in any other situation because, again, Marshall gets a crack in an ACC team. Good spot for them, and they've got a good enough defense. Defense travels on the road. Uh, but I think with the 6-6 six and six mark on the line, I would probably favor Virginia Tech. Not real thrilled about laying the hook in this game because certainly Virginia Tech um, – could leave you hanging and win this game by only three points but they're rounding out the season with five of their last six games at home I think it's a good spot for them to leave a pretty good taste in the home fans mouth by winning a game here and getting to uh to a bowl game so I'd probably look Virginia Tech here not real sure on the total Drew because to me it could go either way Uh, but I do think Virginia Tech now down to three and a half probably has some value the power ratings um that I keep in this particular game happen to show Virginia Tech being a six and a half point favorite. So to me, there is a little value there. Guys, we got the college football rest of the season, which is the bowl package. We're including the uh, championship game weekend in it this weekend. It's just 99 bucks. That's 200 bucks off at sportsmemo.com. Any handicapper of your choice, Robbie Vino being a great choice for college football. Um, check that out at sportsmemo.com right now. We got Akron, South Carolina, Robbie, 57 and a half. The total looks like uh, the Gamecocks laying 29 and a half in Columbia. Yeah, well, you know, a couple of things that I said earlier apply here. First of all, when we we're talking about East Carolina, I had said that I don't believe this is going to be a throwaway game on December the 1st. For Akron, this is probably a throwaway game. I, I can't imagine Akron having any interest other than the money that they're probably going to walk away with for playing this game on the road for scheduling it against South Carolina, where South Carolina probably has a ton of interest in coming out and performing well. So the number sits at 
29 and a half now. I've seen some 30s, Drew. I think they were taken back to 29 and a half, but there's still maybe a couple of 30s out there. Large, large number, but I think that indicates what I just said that for Akron, who the heck wants to go play this game? I know I'd be pretty sure that they don't, even though I'm not inside their locker room. I'm not on their practice field. Uh, just from what we've seen out of college football performances over the last 25, 30 years, I think you could safely say that this is not a game where Akron, if they get behind, they'll fold shop, in, in other words. For South Carolina, the offense has been tremendous. They actually have gone to the up-tempo for almost the entirety of the season, which, believe me, you know, Will Muschamp talked early in the season about wanting to abort the up-tempo offense, but it really worked last week, and they seem to be uh, getting that portion of the playbook real well right now. I know coming into the Clemson game, and I had a big play on over in that contest because in reading a couple of articles prior to that game, South Carolina said with the bye week, they thought they had plenty of stuff in their offensive arsenal that could cause Clemson trouble. And it did. Clemson's defensive backfield didn't look the way it looked all season long against South Carolina last week. South Carolina puts up 35 points, but their defense is so riddled with injuries. Uh, I don't know that they could withstand another injury, South Carolina. They're lucky the opponent is what it is in Akron, a team that generally doesn't have any explosiveness to it. I think the biggest problem for this game, Drew, I really wanted to play it over. I thought 56 was a cheap number because in my mind, South Carolina is good for, you know, 48 in this contest. But the fact that it's going to rain and rain all game long and the game could get out of hand and maybe South Carolina just hands it off in the fourth quarter and and it being the final home game, maybe they give uh, the second team a chance to get on the field. And for those reasons, it's hard for me now to get there. But on dry condi- in dry conditions, I would have probably played over 56 rather easily. Just within the last 45 minutes, we have seen a bump in this game. I, I see the total going up to 57 in most spots, 56 and a half in others, and even Chris now pushing 57 and a half. So there's over money out there within the last 45 minutes. Just don't know that I can be one of those guys to go um, and, and play it because of the bad weather conditions in this game. Robbie, last game up, Stanford versus Cal. Looks like the Cardinal lay in three on the highway, 46 the total. Yeah, a huge game for both. Obviously, the wildfires caused this one to be postponed a couple of weeks ago. Um, they're, they're really opposite at this point in time. Stanford has become an offensive-minded team. Uh, it's certainly the passing game since our Sega Whiteside has come back off of the – I think he missed one game for injury. And since Bryce Love has come back healthy the last couple of games, that offense is humming right now. But going into Justin Wilcox's Cal defense is no joke. That team has shut down almost every good Pac-12 offense so far this season. So Stanford is probably in forward against a very motivated California team. Last week, they win 33-21 against Colorado um, to head into this game. I don't know that the passing offense of Stanford, and in particular, Drew, I wonder about the protection of the quarterback in this game for Stanford. Cal is just so fierce in their front seven, and they're going to make plays behind the line of scrimmage. When you look at the last two opponents where Stanford has really rung up big numbers, 48 and 49 points and a lot of total yards, those two opponents were Oregon State and UCLA. Not even close to being in the league of Cal's defense. So those numbers are really going to come down here. Um, Like I say, Cal has had some close calls. They've had some victories against good teams in this league based on their defense. Ever since the Oregon game, or excuse me, except uh, since the UCLA game, nobody's really gotten to them. The back half of the season has been real good. Washington only scores 10. Washington State only scores 19. Uh, USC gets held to 14. I kind of like the defense here. The money has shown up in Stanford's favor slightly uh, throughout the week, but I'm have to say I'd probably be on Cal here don't like the fact that they have no explosiveness whatsoever in their offense but against Stanford now it's a little bit different deal going against their defense you actually can just hand off the ball and gain some yardage against them at this point in time so any bit of diversity that Cal shows and you know Justin Wilcox will have 
a game plan put together with some assorted trick plays because this is a big game for both as far as rivalry is concerned. I just think I like the dog here plus the points at home. I, I think it'll be a good spot for California. Robbie Vino has been great all year. His five uh, percent blue chip totals in college football, eight and three on the season. He's got one up right now at SportsMemo.com. And guys, check out that uh, rest of college football season. It's the bowl season now, and we're including uh, championship weekend as well. And you can get it all for just ninety nine bucks. That's two hundred dollars off at SportsMemo.com. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. Best of luck with your bets. Have a great weekend. Welcome to the Ford Innovate 191 sales event. Driving better SUV value for you. Take the new Ford EcoSport. Featuring Ford Sync navigation with touchscreen, Ford Pass with Wi-Fi connectivity, rear view camera, parking sensors and cruise control. And right now, you can order a 191 Ford EcoSport with an amazing 7-year warranty, 7-year roadside assistance and 2 years free servicing. All from just €23,525. Ford Innovate. Driving better value for you. See it for your at your local participating Ford dealer. Offer ends December 10th. Ford, go further. Price excludes delivery and related charges. Terms and conditions apply. See Ford.ie for details.